Hi everyone, my name's Amy. Today I'm revisiting an old project. A few years ago I made this lamp for our kitchen nook, um, inspired by the Paul Henningsen artichoke, uh, which is much larger and nicer and also very expensive. Um, this one that I made here is sized to fit a single light bulb and it's made from laser cut Delrin. Um, and while we love it, uh, I just don't feel like I'm done playing with the design yet, so today I'll be making a version of it out of plywood. Adam Stack also sent me their A10 Pro laser engraver to play with, so that's what I'll be using for this project. The A10 conveniently fits within my CO2 laser enclosure, which already has fume extraction, so that's where I'll be running it. I've said it before and I'll keep saying it, uh, don't use laser cutters without a proper enclosure and eye protection. I started setting the height of the laser using the included spacer. Only some of the parts were cutting through cleanly enough to just drop out, even after three passes. Most required a bit of work with a razor blade on the backside, which was really frustrating. I spent some time adjusting the height to try and get better results. In the end, I found I could reliably cut through the material with just two passes, but only if the laser was positioned really close to the material. Here I'm using just four layers of paper to set the height. This has one big problem though, and that's material flatness. Even with this big steel plate weighing down the 2.5mm plywood, it's really common for the laser module to touch the material and risk moving it around during the cut. Before we fix that problem, I'll just take a minute to describe why this height adjustment works. We have a laser beam that's going through a lens, which is characterized by a certain focal length. To do detailed engraving, it makes sense to adjust the laser so that the focal point hits the top surface of the material. This concentrates the laser power onto the smallest possible area. When we use the same setup to try and cut through the material, depending on the thickness, there may not be enough power density towards the bottom of the material to cut all the way through. You can of course fix this by increasing the laser power or doing multiple passes. In my case, I'm already operating near the max power for this particular laser, and I'm too impatient to do more passes. So instead, by moving the material up relative to the focal point, I can increase the power density on the bottom side. Okay, back to the project. I want the lens to be closer to the part, but I also want the laser module to stop touching my wavy workpiece. Looking at the laser module, the easiest solution will just be to cut it shorter. By cutting it shorter, I'll definitely increase the amount of stray laser light, but I'm cutting an enclosure, so I don't really care. Whoops, way too much chatter. I don't know what I was thinking. Here I do my best to salvage this nice piece of tinted glass, but I fail completely. So instead, I replace it with a piece of acrylic. In hindsight, I probably could have omitted this altogether since it probably makes it easier for the fan to clear the smoke. Okay, let's try cutting again. This time, I am again able to cut cleanly through with just two passes, and I don't risk touching the part. This will make cutting the rest of the parts go by much, much faster. Assembly is just like those 3D dinosaur puzzles.
For the rest of the lamp, I'll be using this hanging light cord, some chain from a hardware store, and these spokes from an old bicycle wheel. This little hat is what the lampshade will eventually attach to. These little pieces interlock to constrain the power cord and also grab onto the chain. Uh, in the end, I don't think I needed all four. Two probably would have been enough. I have no idea where this finished lamp is going to go in the house, so for now I'll just test it by hanging it from one of the rafters in the garage. The lampshade attaches with three screws. I'm so pleased with how this turned out. I might do a larger one eventually that would fit in a larger space, and I might also try one where I paint the underside of all the petals a different color. I hope you enjoyed this project. Um, I certainly enjoyed making it. Uh, to wrap up the video, I'll just share my thoughts on this machine. Um, like a lot of the hobbyist engraver machines on the market right now, this one was super easy to assemble. I was cutting parts within an hour. Um, but I do think this one stands out as being one of the nicer, more polished ones. Um, I like the way it looks. I think it looks really clean. Uh, I'm a huge sucker over here for metal buttons, and I love that the height of the module can be adjusted with just one hand. Um, I'm a little disappointed. I wish they had used something like a cable uh, chain instead of this cable wrap that everyone seems to be using, uh, but that's just a personal preference. Um, as you saw in the video, I do think that the hood of the laser module extends a little bit too far and is limiting for if you want to do more than just engraving. Uh, but as you also saw, it's pretty easy to modify. You definitely don't need a mill. A uh, hacksaw and a file would do just fine. Um, also similar to other engravers on the market, um, this one does not come with an enclosure, of course. Um, and it comes with these safety glasses, but these are probably not rated for optical density of at least six, um, both of which I think are mandatory. Um, but it is worth noting that Atomstack does offer what looks like a pretty good enclosure uh, if you don't feel like building your own. Um, and of course, uh, safety glasses like this are widely available online. Uh, finally, I thought I ought to actually engrave something with this engraver. So I made a stainless steel name tag for my dog. Um, the zip ties here are hideous, uh, but I'm really excited about how the engraving came out and I'm looking forward to using that on more projects. Uh, that's all I've got. Thank you for watching.